Hi guys, welcome to the channel. I'm the Jacobian Div, and in this video, I'll be going through how to set up a simple 3JS viewer using React to view 3D models. I've got a structural model currently loaded. I can rotate and pan to view the model. Next, I'll select the pump room, and as you can see, the model gets loaded into the viewer. I'll then view the plant model. And as you can see, the model gets loaded into the viewer. To get started, I'll navigate to VS Code. Here I've got a React app set up. When I scroll down, you can see I have the body with two grids, the one empty grid and the grid with the thumbnails to load the other models. We can see this when I navigate to the app. Here is the empty grid where the 3JS canvas will be added, and here is the other thumbnail grid. Back in the React app, I'll navigate to the package.json file. Here I need to make sure the 3JS package is installed. Back in the app.js file, I'll start by adding a div in the empty grid. I'll then create a reference named mount. Next, I'll add the style. I'll set the width to 100% and the height to 100%. Next, I'll add the canvas. I'll set the canvas ID to canvas. I'll then set the border radius to 5 in the style property. Back in the constructor, I'll start by creating a new 3JS scene. I'll then set the scene's background color. Next, I'll declare a new render struct model function. Passing context as a parameter. Here, I'll declare the renderer by calling the WebGL renderer function. For the parameters, I'll pass the canvas by calling the document query selector function that gets the canvas. I'll then set the anti aliasing property to true. Next, I'll set the renderer size. I'll set the width to the mount's reference client width and the height to the mount's reference client height. I'll then declare the camera by calling it 3 perspective camera function. I'll set the camera's field of view to 25. The aspect ratio to the mount's reference client width divided by the mount's reference client height. I'll set the near plane as 10 and the far plane as 400,000. Lastly, I'll set the camera position. Next, I'll declare a new ambient light, which calls the three ambient light function. Passing the light color and intensity as parameters. I'll then declare a new light variable, which calls a three directional light function. Passing the light color and intensity as parameters. Lastly, I'll set the position of the directional light. I'll then declare a new group named light holder. This is very useful when working with group objects. I'll set the light holder name. I'll then add the directional light and the ambient light to the light holder group. And lastly, I'll add the group to the scene.
Next, I'll declare a new control variable which creates new orbit controls. I'll pass the camera and the renderer's DOM elements as parameters. I'll then append the renderer's DOM element to the mount's reference. Next, I'll declare a new object loader variable which creates a new object loader. I'll then call the load function, passing the structural model as the first parameter. And I'll get the model object as the second parameter. Next, I'll rotate the model by calling the math utils degree to radiance function. This is done because the models I'm using have been exported from Revit as OBJ files. I'll then add the model to the scene. And lastly, I'll call the animate function, which I'll add a bit later. For the onProgress event function, I'll log the model progress. I'll then log any errors to the console, if any. Next, I'll declare the animate function, which I mentioned a bit earlier. Here, I'll declare a frame ID variable, which calls the request animation frame function. Passing the animation function as a parameter. I'll then update the orbit controls. I'll then call the render scene function, which still needs to be declared. I'll then declare the render scene function. And here I'll set the light holder's rotation identical to that of the cameras by calling the quaternion copy function. I'll then call the renderer's render function, passing the scene as the first parameter and the camera as the second. Back in the component at mount function, I'll declare a new context variable which gets the current instance of the class. I'll then call the render struct model function, passing context as a parameter. I'll save the changes and navigate to the browser to see the rendered model. Here we can see that the model was loaded successfully. That should be it for this video. I've added a link to the repo in the description. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.